This video is the first video in a series of videos I plan on doing on different VFX techniques I use in Pygame. This is going to be the half tech demo and half tutorial. I'm not going to be writing the code here, rather I'll be showing you it. Also, instead of my normal vertical slice of my screen, I've got the whole thing. That's an exception I'm making because I've got uh, some very long lines right here, like this one that goes all the way across my screen. Anyways, let's get started with the demonstration. So. This is the base effect here. Uh, the idea is that I've got spark effects I can use here. Historically, I haven't used this effect for sparks, really. It's more like impact uh, visual effects. So like when two objects collide, I use them. I actually used this type of effect in three of my last four game jam entries. And from what I've seen, people really like it. Just to show off some other things, I was messing around with the way that the sparks fall. Normally in my games, they just go straight. So I'll show you what the different forms of that look like. So first is turning off the falling part, and this is just it going straight. And then I also had a version where I can control the angle to just turn right or clockwise. Um, I can also change the amount here by just doing this, where I in range 10. So that'll spawn 10 sparks per frame. And then you get this thing, which you may have seen on my Twitter if you follow me there. Anyways, time to break down how this works. So to understand this, uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that it's useful to have seen my video on removing during iteration and my particles video. Both of those will be linked in the description, and all of the code for this will be linked in the description, so you can test it yourself. So fundamentally, I just manage the sparks here is where I run through them. I move them and draw them onto the screen and remove them if they've disappeared. Uh, this is just my function to add the sparks. So this isn't particularly important. These move and draw functions will come up later. Uh, this function, well, this setup here for the for loop is in the video I mentioned where on moving during iteration. So here's my spark class. So it's initialized with location, angle, speed, color, and then a scale for size. So the idea here is that each spark is made up of four points, and you can calculate where those points are going to be based on the angle of the spark. Uh, I also use the speed of the spark to determine the uh, size of the spark. So it'll be longer and a little wider as well uh, if it's moving faster. So you spawn the spark at a fast speed and you decay the speed. And as the speed decays, the spark gets smaller. And then eventually you just remove it once it disappears since uh, the size is multiplied by the speed. You can see the code for generating the points down here under the draw function. It's made up of four points. These are all calculated relative to the base location of the spark. Uh, you use some basic trigonometry here to modify the point locations based on the angle that the spark is moving in. And then here's what I mentioned where you multiply by speed to have the speed of the spark affect the size of it. And then I have a flat scale value that you can assign here. So of course you gotta do this for your x axis and the y axis, which is y cosine and sine. So this first one here is the front point of the spark, this is where it's heading. Uh, this is one of the points on the side, and then this is the point on the back, and then this is the point on the other side. So all these link together to make the polygon, which is drawn here. Uh, just as an example here, let me draw something here. The polygon is going to look something like this. It's got that shape, and the center is going to be right here. And then the four points are here, oops, here, 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 and here. And yeah, you just get the lines like that. It's bad, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, I'm calculating from the center. This is the first point, second point. I don't know if it's this one or this one. Uh, third point, fourth point. So they're all relative to that center point. That's the most complicated part of this thing. The rest of it's just some basic math and essentially a particle system, which is why I recommended watching the particle video if you haven't seen it. So there's a bunch of functions here, but this one and this one are just used for different implementations of gravity that I was messing around with. This is a core function that's used in other functions. It just calculates the movement of the particle based on its angle and speed and how much time has passed. So you can calculate it here and then modify the location here. These are my implementations for the angle adjustments. You can use any one of these. 
in all of my games where I have this effect, I'm pretty sure I don't use any angle adjustments and it just goes straight. Uh, this is essentially what kills the particle and slows it down. And then this is where it checks if it's dead. Because if the speed is zero, you're multiplying the size by zero. So the size of the spark is going to be zero, in which case you just delete it. Uh, and that's what's being checked here for removal. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I just recommend checking out the code in the description. If you're interested in my projects, I recommend checking out my Twitter or checking out the devlog series on this channel in which I'm covering uh, the largest project I've ever worked on. Also, I've got a Discord server, so if you've got any questions, you can head over there. I've got a channel dedicated to questions. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video.